Hello, we just arrived in Northumberland and I'm so excited to be here. It is beautiful and light outside even though it's about 7.30 p.m. And because we're insane, we are headed out now to see if we can go see a castle because it's Northumberland, the English county with the most castles in all of England. And while I'm here the next two days, my goal is to try and see three castles. Um, one that we have not been to before and two that we've almost seen before. So let's see how that goes and let's see what other adventures we can have. And of course, the main goal for being here is seeing puffins. So let's see how many goals we can accomplish in our return to Northumberland. Okay, so we fell in love with Northumberland last year and decided to come back this year. But you know what's different about this trip to Northumberland versus last year, Ian? What? What's that? There's something we did between last visit to Northumberland and this one. We binge watch every episode of Vera, all 11 seasons, <laughs> which was a little hard for Ian. Yeah. It started to really get old towards the end. Yeah. And um, each episode is an hour and a half, which had a bit of a soporific effect on Ian. Yeah. It was like taking a sleeping pill. <laughs> and I'd be like, stay awake to find out who done it. It's so funny because now coming back here, everything I see, and you admit this is happening with you too. We're like, was this an Avera episode? I feel like this fishing village looks, this beach looks like maybe a dead body was found there. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But anyway, it's, it's so fun to be back. Um, Northumberland is just a pretty t county, lots of counties in England are pretty. I don't know that I've been in an ugly one yet, but it's just so peaceful here and mm -hmm. it feels less crowded and more mm -hmm. unspoilt. Yeah. And the coast line is beautiful. Yeah. But in a different way to, you know, the Cornish coast or the South Devon coast or something yeah. like that. Yeah. How would you describe it? Uh, it's like stepping back in time. Yeah. Yeah. It seems and very, like she was saying, a slow pace. Yeah, and it's not commercialized. Like we're sitting here in this little village and maybe there's a pub, but that's it. Yeah. There's no tea shops charging 12 pounds for a cream tea. There's no Edinburgh Woolen Mill. Yeah. <laughs> there's no Rolly's Fudge Factory or whatever that place is called. <laughs> no. No, just a bunch of fishing boats in a harbor. It's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, this is my idea of an evening stroll. I'm standing here in a field with a bunch of sheep next to a castle. And then on this side is the sea. It's kind of perfect. So I'm standing here trying to take selfies in front of the castle and this sheep has been staring at me like I'm insane. They're not wrong. Hi y'all. I just wanted to take a moment to talk about this moment I'm in the middle of right now because this is just really amazing. Um, I'm hoping the wind noise isn't too bad because I forgot to bring my microphone, but I've got a whole field of sheep over here and I've got this castle behind me and I've got this ravine full of seagulls on this side and then over here is the sea and I can just hear the waves crashing against the shore and there's nobody else around and as long as I don't get murdered and Vera has to come identify my body and figure out who killed me I think this is kind of the perfect perfect night I'm just really having a moment here I really am um, I fell in love with Northumberland last summer when we came here and as a lot of you know if you've been watching the channel for a while, Ian and I have a problem with embracing the whole slow travel concept. 
we like the idea. I mean, we do spend all summer in Britain, but we just want to see everything and we have a tendency to just rush around and do everything really fast. And if you saw my video from last year of the seven castles in two days, it's a great video, so you really should watch that. But I didn't get to really spend time in those castles or tour inside. And I'm actually not even going inside Dunstanborough now because it's closed. But just coming here and absorbing the vibe of being right here in this tranquil, beautiful place is amazing. It's just magical. And this is what traveling Britain and really exploring all the places is about. One thing that a lot of uh, British subscribers say to me is, I love that you don't just go to London and maybe Bath and that's all you see as a tourist, that you see the rest of the country. But I mean, this is just really special. So, on a lighter note, <laughs> I'm gonna stop being so serious. This does kind of look like a typical beach at the beginning of an episode of Vera, where a dead body is discovered and Vera and her cohorts have to show up and identify it and open the case. Dunstanborough Castle is a ruin of a medieval fortress situated on a remote headland known as Dunstanborough between the villages of Craster and Embleton. Construction of Dunstanborough Castle began in 1313 by Thomas, the Earl of Lancaster, a powerful nobleman during the reign of King Edward II. The castle was intended as a symbol of his wealth and influence. It was built on the site of an earlier Iron Age fort and Roman signal station utilizing locally quarried limestone. The castle was designed as a formidable defensive structure with thick curtain walls, towers, and a double-gated barbican. Its strategic location offered panoramic views of the North Sea and the surrounding coastline. However, despite its impressive fortifications, Dunstanborough Castle never saw significant military action and was mainly used as a statement of power and a hunting lodge. After Thomas, the Earl of Lancaster, was executed for treason in 1322, the castle passed through various owners. In the 15th century, it came into the possession of the powerful Percy family, the Earls of Northumberland. If you travel around Northumberland visiting castles, you'll encounter lots of references to the Percy family. The castle underwent some renovations while owned by the Percys, but by the 16th century, it had fallen into disrepair and was mostly abandoned. The ruins that remain today showcase the outer walls, gatehouse, and several towers, giving visitors a glimpse into its former grandeur. The site is managed by English Heritage, and I think it's well worth a visit if you'd like to soak up the vibe of this dramatic castle ruin set in its magnificent, quintessentially Northumbrian location. Now to walk back to my car, which is parked in nearby Craster, a small Northumbrian village located about eight miles northeast of the town of Annick. It is part of the Northumberland coast area of outstanding natural beauty. Craster is known for its picturesque setting, traditional fishing heritage, and famous local delicacy, the Craster Kipper. You can see the smoking in action at L. Robson & Sons. Even though we did not try the legendary kippers, we will on our next visit, I promise. We did, however, eat at the Jolly Fisherman across the street and can highly recommend it. To see more about our meal there, see my best and worst foods video from Northumberland, which I'll link in the description. I love seeing these crab or lobster traps, whatever they are, and the harbor with the fishing boats in it. I have to say, last time we were in Northumberland, we didn't see as much of this kind of fishing village type setting. I'm more familiar with that in Cornwall, but equally beautiful here. 
and this time of night, so peaceful. Nobody's here. Far cry from Cornwall. Craster's history dates back centuries, and it has retained much of its charm and character. It attracts visitors who are drawn to its timeless, tranquil atmosphere, stunning coastline, rugged cliffs, and scenic walks. Craster is the starting point of the popular hike along the footpath known as the Northumberland Coast Path. This scenic trail stretches for approximately 64 miles across the coastline, passing through sandy beaches, dunes, and pretty coastal villages. I would love to hike some of that on our next visit as well. All right, so we just saw three castles in two days. Yes. And we're exhausted. We are. <laughs> but they were so great. Yeah. They were. And really different. Yeah. So Dunstanborough, um, when we got to that one and we parked and I had to walk all the way back to the castle, I thought, wow, this is really far to have to walk to a castle. Yeah. And then we went to Lindisfarne and I had to walk a mile from the parking to the castle. That was yeah, way farther. This, <laughs> these castles all require, those two require a long walk. And then we got to Bamborough and that was easy. Yes. Because we could just park in the car park and walk park up the right hill. Next to it. Yeah. A few yards. <laughs> yeah. But the castle was massive. It was. So it was the exhausting part. Walking. <laughs> the exhausting part of that was just walking all over the castle. But so yeah. interesting. 3,000 years of history. Yep. That's amazing. I really enjoyed visiting those three castles in less than 24 hours. Um, it was a bit exhausting, but so fun. And actually, one thing I really liked is that we came back to places that we'd seen earlier and said, oh, we need to come back there when we can get inside Bamber Castle, or we need to come back here when we can <laughs> actually get on Lindisfarne because the tide is down. So I'm really glad that we had the opportunity. We had a second chance uh, because the castles were great. And I'm glad that we made it to Dunstanborough last night because I'd heard great things about that castle. And I honestly had pretty low expectations, but it was so phenomenal. So I really enjoyed all three castles. I hope that you will come visit Northumberland if you haven't already. And if you haven't seen those castles, I hope you check them out. And if you're an Anglophile or just someone who'd like to learn more about Northumberland, please check out the links on the screen now. Whether it's the seven castles and towns I visited the previous year or the two other castles I toured on this trip, I hope you join me. Thanks so much for your support and do something good in the world today.